Greg in Hungary writes to me, Paul, thank you uh, for your instructive videos. I've been particularly enjoying your recent limited series on the importance of power supplies in audio devices, and I have three related questions. What is the best method for rectification, solid state or vacuum tubes? Could you share your opinion on snubbers across rectifier diodes? And finally, is it possible to establish a hierarchy of the parts within the power supply from a sonic perspective? Just as you said earlier that the importance of the elements of a hi-fi chain is increasingly towards the end, the speakers being the most important, what do you think contributes the most to the sound of a power supply unit? Is it the transformer, the reservoir bypass caps, the rectification, the voltage regulators, etc.? Well, that's a pretty technical question, and as many of my regular viewers know, I believe the power supply to be perhaps the single most important element <coughs> excuse me, in a amplifier altogether, or a DAC, any of that. But mostly, let's just talk analog right now. As a reminder, when we have a preamplifier, that's the simplest to explain. When we have a preamplifier or a power amplifier, sort of the same thing, we are listening to the power supply. The circuitry that we talk so much about that has such low noise, such low distortion, so fast and all of that, all it's doing is acting as a valve to let more or less of the power supply head towards our speakers. You are not listening to the amp, you're listening to the power supply as modulated by the circuit. So the power supply is incredibly important. That said, of course, the circuitry itself of doing it is critical as well, because no matter how great the power supply is, if you can't modulate it properly, if you can't turn it on and off and let it feed into the speakers, th then you're sort of whistling Dixie anyway. Okay, so the power supply is very important. And specifically, he asks a number of, of, of questions. Let's start with rectification. I don't find rectification to be that important. We've spent years going through different rectifiers. We've used vacuum tube rectifiers. We've used really high quality, high speed diodes. And, and they all made a difference. But in the general scheme of things, they weren't that critical. So what we do as a rule of thumb, a process that came up over years of work is we use high-speed diodes. This is sort of our formula, okay? Uh, the diode bridge, and, and you know, I know a lot of people don't even know what the hell's he talking about. So the diode bridge is four diodes. Now remember, a diode is a one-way gate. When you take a diode and you put uh, the battery from a, vo uh, a voltage from a battery through a diode, in one direction, the, the current's going to flow. If you flip the diode around, it won't flow anymore. So it's a, it's a one-way gate, kind of like a, you know, a turnstile where you go through one way, but you kind of come back, can't come back the other way. That's a diode, okay? And coming into our power supply, we have this varying AC voltage. It's going from plus to minus, plus to minus. So what we need to do is we need to separate those plus voltages over here and the minus voltages over here so that we wind up with plus and minus. And we do that with four diodes in a bridge. You put in the AC and these diodes separate it out to plus and to minus. And when they do that, they generate noise. They don't turn on at a certain time and then they do turn on. And when they do, they make, uh, you know, there's a whole science uh, but about rectification. So what we have found is the use of quality high-speed diodes and to your question about snubbers, very important. We, we snub the hell out of the thing. So snubbers are, it, when you have this turn-on surge, 
of the diode turning on and then passing or not, it creates a, a, a transient, and that's noise. So we want to snub that out. So quality, high-speed, solid-state diodes and snubbers. We're not going to talk about uh, switch mode power supplies right now because that's a whole other science that's really coming up, and we'll see the light of day in some of our products here at some point. But in the meantime, those things are important. So. What else, what was the other questions? Um, I've already forgotten the, the last part of the question here. Uh, let's see, towards the uh, power amp being the most important than the power amp, what is the source? Okay, he had three questions. Uh, oh, is it uh, possible to establish a hierarchy? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, given this rectification is taken care of properly, and the next important thing, even more important sonically than the diodes, are the caps. The quality of the capacitors makes a huge difference. The PMG preamplifier that we just launched a little while ago, one of its big secrets to its success and its sound quality is the capacitors that we use in the power supply. So typically you use electrolytics. In this power supply, you'll look and you'll see there's giant film caps, big 100 microfarad film caps that are, are huge. And we went to all that trouble and expense because it, it makes them sound so much better for the caps. And then finally, it's the regulation. And I would say if a we were to make a pyramid, the capacitors would be right up top of the pyramid, the rectifier over here, and the regulation over here. Important? Absolutely. Regulators make a big difference, but those caps make all the difference in the world. There you go. I hope that helps.